Today, I just want to respond to some comments. Nothing too crazy here today. I was going through some comments of the most recent videos, and you guys had left some pretty insightful things that I'd like to take a chance to address and also respond to. So that's what we're going to do here today. Uh, in other news, I ran this morning, ran for my life, ran like I was running from the police. Yeah, I did. I'm doing my workout on one day and then high cardio on the off days, which that began today. I tried to jog for like a mile. I didn't make it very far with that. So I ended up doing sprints and I'm, I was running pretty fast. I had to film at one time. I'm going to do a 40 yard dash at some point because I feel like, I feel like I'm fast. I'd like to see just how fast, but then again, maybe I'm just slow and I just think that I'm fast. I am 40 after all. 40-year-old does a 40-yard dash in 10 seconds. Whew, boy, that, that, would be, that would be slow right there. In other news, I feel like there's some other things that I meant to mention as well. What were the... Oh, I'm taking this workout and this journey to get myself back in shape very serious. I'm looking for a weight bench, an exercise bike. I'm looking for some weights. I've got some elastic band things that are pretty useful. Um, but I'm taking it very serious and I, I share that with you guys because I'm getting ready to begin fasting. That's something that a few different people have mentioned that I should attempt to do. If you want to lose weight and burn fat, it seems the best way to do it is to fast. Now I'm going to do a lot of research on it and I'm thinking next week maybe I'm going to do a 24 hour fast and also maybe if I do it, what if I live stream it as well? Could be something to that, no guarantees, but we'll see. You let me know if you'd like to see something like that. Can't even remember the last time I did a live stream here on After Prison Show. What better one to do the 24 hour challenge, no food for a fat boy. Could be something to that. Again, folks, today I just want to take the time to respond to some comments. I've got some really good ones, including one from somebody you might want to stay tuned for to see who exactly that somebody is. So anywho, so with all of that being mentioned, what do you say we go ahead and we dive? Rolling the dice, right? That wasn't really real. Dive! Dive head first up into this video. Jesus, God, Jesus is so small. Uh, Jesus Zavala. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Joe I look up to you because of YouTube. I'm 21 and I like your ingenuity at starting businesses. <laughs> Jesus, pump the brakes a little bit right there. I'm sure there's going to be quite a bit of people who disagree with that comment. Joe's ingenuity at starting businesses? <laughs> All he ever does is fail. P.S. Low key, I'm glad you're handling that weight. That stomach looking bad? Jesus. I'd take a little bit of offense to that if I wasn't knee-deep week four into this workout and weight loss journey. So thank you for just uh, encouraging me. I know that, you know, you're low-key not trying to, to diss on me, but uh, boy, hey, if I wasn't working out and, and if I was still crushing them cheddar and sour cream potato chips, which I'm not even eating any potato chips, not even drinking any sodas, barely consuming any sugar at all, trying to cut the carbs out as well, I'd probably take a little offense to that. But I don't because I'm working on it. Keep it up. I won't stop watching your videos. Peace. Jesus, thank you very much. Uh, in response to what you mentioned at first, you say that you look up to me because of YouTube I'm, and you're 21 and you like the ingenuity at starting businesses. You know, can't nobody knock the hustle. Can't nobody knock the fact that I've tried quite a bit of everything. Cleaning businesses, moving companies, storage units, flipping houses, landscape, YouTube, moped rental service, and then a lot of other businesses we didn't even get too far with. Photography, drone photography, caricatures, paint night events. Look, I'm glad that I inspire you. And you know, if I could tell you anything, it would be if you've got an idea for starting something, do it. And work as hard as you possibly can at whatever that is. If it's construction, if it's anything, you know, whatever it is that you feel like you're good at and you could be good at, go for it. Uh, because the way the world is these days, probably won't be here for much longer, but I'm just saying, I mean, the world as a whole, uh, you might as well go for it, right? What do you have to lose except for everything? 
You know, and if that, and if you're okay with accepting the risk versus the reward, and I'm not trying to be sarcastic saying that because legitimately that's what it takes to win. You got to risk everything. I did that with Filecoin. I lost my ass. But interestingly enough, I'm ready to dive deep back up into the crypto. Only Bitcoin though. Only Bitcoin. That was another business venture right there, wasn't it? Day Trader. Didn't fare too well with that one. Neither like so many others as well. MTN Vortex, is that Mountain Vortex? Hmm, interesting. I always thought those paint nights were for drunken cat ladies. <laughs> That's kind of funny right there. And sneaky dudes trying to pick up drunken, dissatisfied housewives. MTN Vortex, man, if that ain't a way to think about it right there. And to a certain degree, you're probably right. Can you imagine being so down, down bad? You've exhausted all efforts. You've been to the Barnes and Nobles. You've hung out at the Starbucks all day long. You've been on the tender and the plenty of fish and the grinders. Facebook Marketplace even. I've seen that actually. Somebody posting an ad on Facebook Marketplace. Good man. Just looking for his other half. <laughs> I wonder if he ever found that. But could you imagine being down so bad that you attempt paint night events. You don't give a damn about the painting. You ain't trying to paint no happy little clouds. You might be if we're talking about a bukkake type of a scene. Yeah, girl, I, I don't paint the clouds, but I could paint your face though. Whoa, whoa, what are we doing here? I didn't do enough paint night events to really be able to tell you what the crowd was. It was mostly just friends and people who wanted to support what I was doing. Uh, what the woman Ashley who had the bar was trying to do, and maybe, you know, one or two stragglers who were just bored looking for something to do. So in my time, that's the crowd that I drew out. Nowadays, I think about doing it. Paint night with a famous YouTuber. Could you imagine the turnout? Probably not a damn soul. Who? After prison show? I thought this was gonna be Jake Paul. Oh, oh my God. I, I'm not trying to, who are you? You got a YouTube channel. Lenny Shaw, I think I pronounced that correctly. Hey Joe, still not smoking, question mark. I tried to quit and I am struggling. Love this, by the way. These stories are so funny. Uh, Lenny Shaw, been over a year that I've quit smoking, maybe even pushing P, I mean pushing two. I think pushing P means cool. I don't know. I heard that in a future song, I think, just recently. I'm pushing P. Don't have no fucking idea. I think he was talking about powder cocaine. Uh, but, God, I got off topic so quickly there. Uh, Lenny, yeah, definitely still not smoking. And you mentioned that you've tried to quit and you're struggling. Let me give you the best advice that I possibly can. Forget your nicorettes. Forget your nicotine patches. All of that shit is just a mind fuck, in my personal opinion. There was this movie from a long time ago. I believe it was called Matchstick Men. I believe that was the movie. Nicolas Cage, he was a con man, and he was really messed up in the movie in his mind. And he was on this medication that was supposed to help him, maybe with like anxiety or something. And then somewhere along the way in the film, he would learn that the medication he was, were like sugar pills or something like that. Uh, they were doing absolutely nothing for him. So, you know, you can spend all of this money on counselors and therapies and hypnosis and patches and gums and lessons and courses when really all you got to do is just buckle down and do it. I'll share with you real quick how I quit. I've smoked multiple times throughout my life little spurts. A couple of years here, a year there, would get locked up, come home, stay, you know, sober stay nicotine free for a couple of months, then jump back right into it. This is the longest time that I've gone without smoking and trust me, I still think about it. But I care too much about my health at this point to go back to smoking. And I wanna be better than everything. I do, I want everything that could bring me down, I mean, like drugs and cigarettes and alcohol and any kind of addictions. So what I would do, what I did the last two times that I quit was, is I would work at it slowly. I would set a quit date. That date is a month away. And then the first week I cut down my cigarettes by a good amount. If you're smoking a pack, cut it down to three quarters of a pack. And then the next week, cut it down to half a pack. And then the next week, cut it down to, you know, a quarter of that. And you're just building up to this quit date. And then when you get to that quit date, just don't do it. It's going to be the hardest thing that you do. The first day is going to suck. The next day, 
might be a little bit easier because you made it through the first day, but then that next week is gonna suck. But then it does get easier. Chew gum, eat breath mints. Those were some things that I used. If I can do it, you can do it. Anybody can do it. Cause I got a pretty decent addictive mentality. So just keep that in mind. Right now I'm trying to quit food. Maybe not entirely, but at least enough to get in better shape and not be a fat boy no more. Uh, Lenny, also glad to hear that you're enjoying the story. So thank you for rocking with me. Matt, ooh, Matt Jacobson. Joe, you know for a guy that has anxiety, you handle that like a beast. How about sharing how you handle it? By the way, I will not judge you if you use prescription medications. No shame in it. Matt Jacobson, thank you for your comment. Really awesome comment. Yeah, I deal with a lot of anxiety. Some days, and these days are far and few between where I'm like, I can't leave the house. And what I've learned is, is that if I stay in the house too long, like let's say I make it all the way till two o'clock in the afternoon, I haven't left the house yet. Well, then I start to get anxious, like, damn, I ain't done shit today. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. And then it almost becomes a little harder for me to get out of the house. I've got a routine. My routine is get up early, get to work, go out, do things, have, have things that I want to get done for the day that cause me to be out and about. With the anxiety, no medication, but I need it. Because trust me, I deal with issues way deeper than the anxiety. I deal with manic depress depression and I'm bipolar. Like there's no doubt about that. It runs in my family. I got it. And I definitely need some kind of medication for that. And I'm, well, shit, this week is over. I was planning on trying to go see a counselor or a therapist this week, but I'm going to do that next week. And if they put me on some medication, I'll definitely share that with you. My fear on the medication though, is that it makes me lazy, tired, or want to eat all the time. I'm scared of medication. And just like I mentioned with the cigarettes, do you really need it? I mean, do, is this chemical imbalance? Well, shit, at 40 years old, I haven't been able to do anything with it. So maybe I do personally need something more to try to help balance me out because the lows is low. And I mean, I got no reason in the world to be low. I'm blessed and I live a, an awesome life. But you know, one thing that I can share with you that I've learned and I have not ever made it to any kind of financial status that I've ever really wanted to make it to. I've done well, but I've learned, you know, the money don't mean shit. I see people with nothing who are way happier. So just a little food for thought right there. But uh, thanks, Matt. As far as the anxiety, how do I deal with it? I just deal with it. Just like with the depression and the, the manic bipolar shit. But a lot of times I don't deal with that well. And I want to, God, I want to enjoy life. It's crazy, that's the motto that I say at the end of every video, but to be honest with you, I have not ever fucking enjoyed life. And I don't say that to be like, oh my God, Joe, oh, I'm so, like, no, man, it's just the truth. I'm grateful and I, you know, it's just what it is. I love my life, I love my wife, I love my dogs. But still, personally, like, self-feelings and shit. I don't know where I'm going with that. Hey, Matt, thanks for uh, stirring up that can of worms. Uh, but no, all seriousness. Shout out to you, Matt. And uh, not only am I trying to take better care of myself physically, I got to do it mentally. And uh, that's going to be the next step of this journey. Guns and guitars. In 1980, Newport News was pretty decent, close to Williamsburg. You said Williamsport. Uh, okay, yesterday's video, I was sharing how the place where I was doing the paint night events at is a shithole where flip number four is. It's a shithole, you know, but it's actually on the come up now, but it is a shithole. Uh, this guy, Guns and Guitars, says in 1980s, Newport News was a pretty decent spot. Close to Williamsburg, he meant to say there. That must have changed drastically, question mark. I don't know when, I don't know why, I don't know how, but it sure did. Came home from prison and I was living out there in 2015, 2016, early parts of that. It was, it is bad. It's bad news. It's not a good spot. You got downtown Newport News, which is the worst. Uptown Newport News is a really, really nice spot. And slowly but surely, they're just steamrolling over all the bad spots everywhere. Whether it's getting flipped or whether it's getting just bulldozed and turned into new developments. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely changed a lot. Did you ever go to the beach jellyfish from hell? Never even heard of it. I uh, lived next door to the Naval Weapon Station. Well, shout out to you, Guns and Guitars. Yeah, I, I've never heard of that spot. 
awesome to know that, you know, you lived there back in the day. Hell, I'd love to have seen what it was like back in the 80s. I was just watching Top Gun last night. God, man. I watched those classic movies, and I'm just like, man, things were just different back then. Back before all the technology and the cell phones and the social media, man, you were forced to be out and about just enjoying life, taking in every moment, making a phone call, like, a, you know, making a real phone call. It's just crazy. The lesbian lady. Still want to know if you would be willing to do a video with someone who's pursuing being a correctional officer. I genuinely would love to know your opinions and takes and even advice. I don't know if you assume everyone that does a video because of the past wants money, etc. I genuinely don't. I just want to know what I can do to inspire or change people in prison for the better. Lesbian lady? Try saying that out in public. Hey, lesbian lady! That's probably not going to land well. Um, I commend you for wanting to be a correctional officer, what it sounds like, and wanting to go into that profession because you want to help encourage people to do better, treat them better, inspire or change people, like you mentioned in your comment, but the reality of the situation is, is I don't necessarily think that that happens all that often. Now, don't get me wrong. Of course, you know, good, good officers. You could be one of those as well if you became a correctional officer. Or you could get changed by the circumstances. You go into it with the right intentions. You want to change. You want to help inspire. And then you realize it's a shit show on the inside. The inside is full of so many cons and manipulations and games and tactics and you know, ways to try to spin things for the advantage of prisoners and not all prisoners, right? But you're going to see that more times than you won't. And I just wondered to myself, how many prison guards go into that profession with the same thinking that you have and then realize quickly when they knew they should that the world was right big or whatever that means. And so I wake in the morning and I step outside and I take a deep breath and I get real. Sorry, got off topic. When a song hits me, it's just time to go. But really, I wonder how many people go into prison guard professions thinking they're going to change the world and then realize, man, fuck this. This check ain't even worth it. I'm sure that actually happens quite a bit. In terms of doing a video, uh, I'm not really... I'm not really for doing videos with people. I just got to be honest. Uh, lesbian lady, I hope I was able to shed a little light, my perspective at the very least. I commend you for wanting to pursue that profession. I encourage you to do so. And I hope that it lives up to your expectations of what it is and what you're hoping to be able to do with it, the job and your impact on people who are serving time. Cosmic Kills. It would be a blast to have a paint night with Joe. Bring it to Tampa, plus you can go to all the theme parks. You know, could be something I get back up into doing the paint night events. Again, I'm not no strong painter, but damn, we could have a good time doing that shit. Uh, Cosmic Kells, thanks for the encouragement, and who knows, maybe it'll be something that we pursue. It could be like paint night with a twist, because I see so... I remember now why I wanted to share your comment. Not only is it encouraging for me, you know, there's other people that I know who are doing paint night events. There was another mural painter, a guy by the name of Q, and he was a really good artist, good painter. Well, you know, this guy, and he was an urban novelist. He wrote a ton of hood books, got them published. He does these paint night events, uh, sip and paint or some shit like that. And, I mean, he seems to be doing really well with those. And he's an author, so... You know, when you, I, I think back to the other comment about imagining the type of turnout. You know, I don't know if the dude's single or not, but it seems to be all ladies showing up to his events. So I, I'm sure if he's single, he's enjoying life quite a bit doing those events. I've also seen trap and paint. You might have seen that on uh, TikTok as well. I gotta be honest with you. Not only is trap and paint so interesting to me, because when you see the videos, there's like chicks twerking and painting. Uh, the craziest thing, can you imagine painting with your ass cheeks while twerking? Now, there's something to be doing a paint night with. But even more interesting than the than the trap and paint brand, which is actually coming here if it hasn't already been here, uh, to my local city, 
were the comments on those TikTok videos. TikTok comments are, man, they are some of the most wild, to say, to say it mild. But trapping paint, yeah, man. And who knows, maybe I could be doing paint night events again sometime. There's only two comments left, and like I mentioned at the beginning of this, one of these comments was from somebody that you're going to be surprised to hear. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you that it's nobody that you know, but it's somebody that I know. At least I knew from way back yonder. A guy by the name of Chris. Uh, Chris left this comment, and I'm glad that I saw this. Do you remember when me and you worked at Food Lion 20 years ago, LOL? You have done great. Tried to reach out and would be nice to see you again. Three likes on that comment. Let me tell you something about this dude, Chris, right here. Uh, this dude is absolutely legit. And I didn't remember that him and me worked at Food Lion together. But I'm pretty sure that's how we actually met if I can remember correctly. Me and Chris were the same age, we went to the same high school, but we were two totally different people. Back in high school, Joe was a skater boy. He was a skater boy, dude, a little raper boy. Whoa, what the fuck? I was a skater dude, Chris was kinda like a street dude, a little bit of a, a hood dude, and a white guy. And you know, we were two totally opposite people. When we first probably met while working at Food Line, I, can't remember if that's exactly how it went down or not, but uh, yeah, I'd love to be able to reconnect with this dude because the stories that he could tell, you know, holy shit, man. I don't even know what I, I, I can say here. <laughs> like, yo, man, Chris was a very uh, good person for me to know back in the day because, uh, you know, we were both getting money. At least, you know, I was attempting to. I was horrible. The activities that took place when I met Chris, I could just say like this, you know, I was starting to get the uh, the devil's lettuce jumping a little bit. And uh, yeah, there was, there was that. You know, Chris knew me from some really crazy stories. He knew me from the trailer park when Joe was wide the fuck open. Uh, not only that, I'm getting high back then. I was smoking crack for a brief period of time during that time. I wonder if he knew about that or ha would have anything to share about that. Uh, there was a major robbery that took place involving me getting robbed and, you know, all of us almost getting killed. Uh, Chris was around during that time. I'm sure he could share that. Man, if I could get up with Chris and get him to get on video, man, that shit would be wild. Chris, so to you specifically, man, hey, I'm definitely going to reach out to you. I would love to reconnect with you, and I'm going to look you up on Facebook and see if uh, if I can get in contact with you, and let's talk, man. I hope life has been good for you, and man, that's just wild, man. Wild to think about what was going on in my life during that time, and you know, this dude could probably share things that I have forgotten about. That's wild, man. Chris, very special shout out to you, brother, and uh yeah, I look forward to talking with you. Now, real quick, I want to mention this as well. You know, I mentioned that when I met Chris, I was a, a skater dude. Chris was sort of a hood dude. You know, and now people hear me on these videos and sometimes they, they will say things like, Joe, you talk like you're black. You know, where did the transformation take place at? Well, you know, when you serve time in prison, you're going to pick up the lingo. You're going to learn to talk like a prisoner. You're going to talk the language that's taking place inside of the prison. So it's safe to say that when I was in prison, that's where I was turned out. Wait! That didn't sound right. That's not what I mean. That was a joke that I came up with this morning for this video. And I hate when jokes don't just come organic, like as I'm filming, as I'm, there's no script or no rhyme or reason to these videos. So if I plan a joke, you can tell that when I've got so much build up to get to the punchline like that one had. Uh, I still hope you found it funny. Still hope you did. Final comment that I want to wrap this video up on. This one is from Aaron. It's in relation to yesterday's video, which was about the paint night story and all the crazy stuff that was going on with that. I also read comments on that video that said, you know, you need to have a better title, Joe. You guys got to know, you see the views. Uh, you know, it's deeper than rap at this point. You got to know that I just, I love you guys. And I love to be able to share things with you no matter what the views are. And uh, we're too old for the clickbait. We're too old for it. Aaron, this is probably the most boring shit I've ever heard. 
comma, quick, period. Touche, Aaron. Touche. I respect your opinion. I uh, appreciate you voicing it down in the comments as well. What were the comments of YouTube created for after all? Uh, interestingly enough, they've taken away the dislike button. And I just can't, you know, I don't know. Whatevs. You know what I mean, Aaron? Whatevs. There's better shit on YouTube for sure. Thanks for giving it a shot at the very least. The jokes in that video didn't come till later in the video. I wish I would have got to some punchlines a lot sooner than, than I did. But there really wasn't a whole lot to joke about with that video. I wasn't trying to be bashing on the establishment or anything like that. So it is what it is. Like I said, I respect your opinion and the opinions and comments and views of everybody else who leaves constructive, uh, genuine comments. So long as you ain't saying anything too outlandish. Not what I mean? Not, not what I mean? Not what I mean? Know what I mean. Yeah, you do. Folks, that's all I got. I hope this was a video that you guys enjoyed. If it was, hey, leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about this. And I look forward to sharing with you guys another comment response video coming sometime in the near future. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace!